Hello everyone, this is Matt from tracyandmatt.co.uk and today I have, uh, I'm pretty excited, I've just received my uh, Nexus One inside the package. I just thought I'd show you um, how it arrives um, in case anybody wants to actually purchase. Obviously I'm based here in the UK um, and I know a few people were actually sort of concerned about placing an order and actually getting it shipped from the US. So this is how it's uh, actually arrived. Uh, it took less than a week to arrive as well. I actually ordered it uh, just earlier this week and uh, it's already arrived. So this is how it arrives in a brown box like so. Uh, pretty well packed with these um, air filled bags. And then the next one itself is inside the box at the bottom. Pretty nice looking box, just comes to that in one second. Uh, obviously I have my packing notes in the bottom. And I also purchased a UK specific mains charger, which uh, wasn't totally essential because I'm sure I've got um, a charger that will work with the Nexus One, but I thought it was worth actually, you know, getting hold of the uh, of the right thing to go with the, the new handset. So uh, let's just open that up, and as we can see, it is a UK three-pin plug, and uh, it is a micro USB style charger. Um, I say that uh, wasn't totally essential. I probably could have done without that, but I thought it was worth actually getting, uh, and also perhaps to see what they were going to ship to me. So the Nexus One box itself, well, it's um, fairly typical of um, HTC at the moment. Um, bearing in mind this is an HTC product. So the box is, uh, you know, quite nice, quite nice from the outside. There is this sort of colour accent around uh, around the edge there, as you can see, and obviously the logo on the front. And if we open up, we have the handset right on top. Again, that's pretty typical in terms of like the HTC package design, but an awful lot of manufacturers are doing a very similar box design. So the handset itself is right on top. We're going to come back to that in just a few moments. We're going to have a look at what else is also in the box. So we have uh, underneath that we have a pouch, uh, which is just a you know a typical pouch. It just slips inside. Um, it isn't uh, a belt, no belt loop or anything like that, but it is padded and it is foam. And there is the little Android logo on there as well, which is quite cool. Um, it makes it slightly different. Uh, have a step-by-step -step getting started if you like. Well, that's pretty good. It literally is five steps to get going from inserting the battery and, uh, and so on. And then uh, how to use just a few of the very basic features. Pretty cool that that's included because I think perhaps um, we're going to have um, a lot of users of this handset that have never used Android before. And possibly not even used, uh, not use a smartphone. I think the exposure and the impact there might be different. So you've got the warranty statement and important information in a little booklet there also. Then underneath that, we have all of the accessories all laid out, which is uh, again quite nicely laid out. So inside the first bag, we have a USB to micro USB sync and charge cable, which is a pretty standard looking item. We have a battery in the bottom there, which is uh, listed, does it say the capacity? It's 1400 milliamp hour battery. Then we have a headset, which is uh, has a couple of different foam covers there. It also a clip, so you can clip it onto clothing. Then it is a fairly standard item for um, you know an HTC item with the exception of having the little Android logo on the headphones themselves, which is, again, it's a nice little touch. It is a four pole, three and a half mil jack with an inline microphone, which also has push buttons on it for uh, answering and releasing the call, and also for um, you know, media controls, play pause, uh, and skipping your tracks back and forth. So that's also quite cool that that's included there. And then last of all in the box, uh, I won't bother to open it, but uh, it is the uh, US style charger so it's a two pin uh, two flat pin plug and uh, a micro USB connector on the other end as I say that's a standard item obviously I bought the UK version as well so that's quite cool um, so looking at the handset itself well first of all it's uh, wrapped in this plastic so we're going to just uh, pull that open like so and slide the Nexus one out of that packaging like so uh, first impressions, to be honest with you, it's a lot slimmer than I expected it to be and perhaps a little larger you know, in other directions than I expected it to be. Um, but on the front we do have a 3.7 inch display which is 480 by 800 pixels uh, WVGA and it is an AMO LED display or Active Matrix Organic LED. 
Um, so that's going to be really interesting to actually look when we come to uh, power it up in just a few moments. Obviously touch screen and it is capacitive. Fairly large speaker on the top. That's obviously for a uh, loudspeaker for our calls. Then we have some touch sensitive uh, kind of buttons underneath. So you've got your menu button, your home button, search button and the back button. And then there is a little trackball for actually navigating around display. And that is also acts as a push button. On the left hand side we have an up and down volume control rocker. Uh, which is uh, again pretty standard placement for uh, the volume control. On the bottom we have a micro USB sync charge connector and also you'll notice there are a couple of other little um, shiny connectors there. Now I suspect that's so that we can actually place it into uh, docking cradles and, uh, and the like and have it charged through, uh, through those connectors on the bottom. There is a small hole there which is the microphone. Really nothing at all on the right hand side is completely clean. On the top we do have 3.5mm headphone connector which is where we plug in uh, for headphones and also that wired headset that is supplied. Then we also have power button and on the back we have a 5 megapixel autofocus camera which also has a flash. It does stand out at the back a little bit though which uh, is perhaps a little bit of a concern. Something I mentioned um, with the HD2 in fact that uh, perhaps that lens uh, on there is going to get scratched when you're actually placing it uh, face down. So uh, let's just remove the battery cover which slides open like so. Uh, we have a 4 gig micro SD card already installed. This is where our SIM would go and, and our battery pops in just that way around like that. Fairly easy to get in and the back cover just pops on like back on like so and that's fairly easy to pop on too. Now I'm actually going to sort of go into a slightly darker environment so I can show you the um, OS a little bit more detail so I'm going to go somewhere that's a little bit darker and uh, so we can actually look at the OS. Okay so I've just moved somewhere that's uh, slightly less bright so that we can actually see the screen a little better and where there should be a little bit less reflection and while I'm waiting for that to start up let me run down the top line specification 119 millimeters from top to bottom just under 60 millimeters wide and 11.5 millimeters thick. It feels quite lightweight at only 130 grams with the battery. Um, not bad at all. As you see, nice little animation on the screen there. It's pretty cool as that's starting up. Uh, in terms of the rest of the spec, 3.7 inch display we've already mentioned, 1400 milliamp hour battery. The processor is a Qualcomm QSD, which uh, is running at one gigahertz, which is uh, should be pretty rapid. 512 meg RAM and 512 meg ROM. Uh, as I say, should run pretty well to be honest with you. Uh, the Android operating system is Eclair 2.1 and it is the first device to have the 2.1 OS. So that's going to be, again, pretty interesting to see what that uh, has in store for us. Let's just start up. We're going to begin and it tells us how to use the keyboard. Well, I'm actually going to go back and we're going to skip through the steps there, connecting to the Wi-Fi. We're going to skip just for now and location information. Um, it'll just leave the date format and time format for now, just for speed. And uh, we have this interesting live wallpaper, uh, which is uh, unique to this handset and does look quite cool. Um, whether or not that may become irritating over time, perhaps it's kind of uh, Tron-esque with the light, you know, light cycle-ish, but uh, it is different and it is quite cool. You can change that and you can turn that off. So um, when we actually come to this point, we have a very similar um, environment to you know, other Android devices uh, with the icons already on desktop. Google search there, which is actually a widget. Um, we can swipe across to get to another page where we can actually set up additional widgets and uh, we can go the other way. And we can do exactly the same thing. Oh, we already have a widget for the power controls. So we have uh, one there for brightness, synchronization, GPS, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Obviously, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are currently turned off. Gmail and Google Talk there underneath also. That, uh, there is another page there that we can use, which is uh, blank. So it actually shows here that we're on page four with those four little dots. Uh, so it's four pages that we kind of had. This page three, page two and page one so um, yeah well, this is kind of our main page whenever we come back to the main screen this is what we're going to end up coming back to so um, that's basically the pages that we have there different uh, desktops if you like or tabs if you like but this is our main page from here we can get into messaging and android market phone contacts browser and maps but we can change these icons we can add to them or we can remove them if we don't want them so if we go to the phone dialer we have a nice phone dialer 
Again, with a capacitive touch screen, it's extremely sensitive, requires only the smallest touch. But you notice here that it is coming up with an American style format there where I'm actually typing in the number. But obviously we can change that, that's probably in a regional setting. Then we have the call log, contacts and favourites. Well, don't have anything set up at the moment, obviously just starting up, so uh, don't have anything in there. But we can go back, we can go back to the main screen. We could look at the contacts, um, but obviously we don't have anything set up, as I already mentioned. Browser and maps, well, um, we'll pop into those later. I'll pop into messaging for now, and we can type a new message, and we can compose a message, and we have an on-screen QWERTY, and we can type away, and it is nicely sensitive, so it works very well. I can back up out of that, and I can actually rotate, and I can use the display this way around, and I can type away pretty quickly, and that, again, works very well, well because the touchscreen is that sensitive. Uh, if you're unused to capacitive screens, then uh, this is going to be a bit of a revelation because uh, the touch is is extremely soft. It doesn't require any pressure and it doesn't require a hard fingernail press. Uh, interactive display though, as you can see there, or interactive desktop, when I'm actually touching areas that don't have icons, uh, we're getting this little burst of colour underneath my finger. Quite cool. doesn't really perform any function, but it does look quite cool. If we go into the main menu, which is accessed by tapping the button at the bottom, it brings up the main menu items, and we can go back home. And it's nice that we have this animation where the icons kind of fly in and fly out um, when you actually switch between the menu and uh, back to the home screen. Uh, so the top line things that we have here, browser, calculator and calendar, obviously the camera, now let's just launch the camera and see what the camera application is like. Uh, obviously it's struggling with uh, how dark it is in here, obviously the uh, camcorder is uh, okay with that, but the Nexus is uh, struggling a little bit. Let's just put uh, something in the way and let's see how the flash performs when I actually try and take a picture. Okay, well it's interesting because of the placement of the LED flash there, which is obviously just underneath the lens in that, in that arrangement uh, for the camera. Uh, the illumination actually on the shot is brighter in one area than the other. Um, but, you know, if you're taking shots, um, perhaps if you're out partying or anything else, I guess uh, you probably live with the shots that it's going to take. I'll come up with some more sample footage and uh, some more photographs. When we come to do the full review, I'll put them on there so that you can actually see um, what, the, uh, what the camera is really like. Um, there's a car thing there, which is obviously to do with, uh, you know, using your car kit, which... Uh, I uh, obviously don't have one yet, so we'll just uh, go back into the main menu. You have your clock, your contacts, and email. Facebook is already pre-installed, which is quite good. Gallery and Gmail. Uh, and I do have Maps. Well, I don't have uh, any Wi-Fi set up yet, um, nor do I have a SIM card. But, but we do actually need to um, download the Maps as we go um, from the Internet. So uh, we won't pop into Maps just at the moment. Market, similar thing, where we actually do have to... Um, have obviously a network connection messaging we've already seen mp3 store powered by Amazon good that's quite cool music there also then we have news and weather obviously the phone that we've already seen in settings let's pop into settings so we have wireless network settings and call settings so let's go into wireless networks and I'm just going to enable the Wi-Fi and let me just set up my Wi-Fi network Okay, setting up a wireless network is pretty straightforward. It found the wireless network that I have here. Uh, just put in the um, actual password for the network, and that's come up. And now, as you can see at the top there, with the icon at the top there, I am now connected to a Wi-Fi network. So that's quite good. Let's pop back out of that. And now that we have a Wi-Fi network, let's go into Maps. And it's found my location within 70 meters, which is pretty impressive. And uh, let's... Uh, move around a little bit. Uh, I can't do the zoom with two fingers. No multi-touch support in the maps, which is a bit of a shame. But I also can zoom in and out with the other controls here. And uh, I can actually search for a location by pushing the search button, which is quite good. And that's a quick search box, but we'll come back out of there. Uh, we can push the menu button and I can change the layers and I can change it to satellite. And that very quickly loads the satellite imaging for the uh, for the mapping, it's working very well. I it actually does show up at the top that the GPS is active and does have a signal, which is uh, very good. I am actually very much indoors 
and it's picked up straight away and you know pretty quickly so that's quite impressive let's come back out of there though and we go back to something else we go back into the menu and uh, while we have while we have a connection why don't we just have it actually have a look at the browser and surprise surprise Google being the home page so let's actually go to our website and we'll type that in Tracy and Matt tracymat.co.uk is actually coming up as, a, up as a suggestion so we'll just hit that and let that load and it's loading pretty rapidly actually in fact I would say that's very very quick that's rendered that page um, quicker than um, most or in fact I think it's the quickest I've actually seen the page our page load on a mobile browser so that's very very impressive I'm assuming I can rotate the display yep the color is absolutely amazing as well. I haven't mentioned already, but um, because it is an AMO LED display, um, the color reproduction is fantastic. The blues on this page are extremely rich. It possibly isn't coming across quite as well on the video, but um, um, I can see how rich the color is on all of our you know, banners here and actual orange colors here very very impressive and obviously that's scrolling nice nicely through there uh, it does scroll with momentum as well which is good so we can actually flick through the page obviously an awful lot of content here so to have loaded as quickly as it did it is very very impressive so um, I think I'm going to enjoy the browsing experience on the Nexus one it would seem um, no two finger zooming uh, no multi-touch support um, hopefully that will get hacked in at some point or maybe even through an official update but uh, it doesn't have uh, multi such support as standard which is a real shame our zooming is done here and with the little zoom icon in the corner so obviously I've zoomed in and let's zoom back out and we can zoom back out and we can zoom back out uh, and that gives us back to our full page view I mean even at this full page view obviously the, the site is uh, pretty much designed for uh, 1024 minimum width uh, to be honest with you most pages are now um, but even where it's compressed that down to the uh, 800 by 480 display the text is still really legible and uh, let's say it's done a really excellent job at rendering this page so very impressed with that so far let's actually scroll through and let's find a video so a YouTube video there I can press on play and rather than actually loading it in place it's gone out launched as you can see there it actually has launched the YouTube application that's on the handset and it's actually started playing that and then if I go back it's actually taken me just back to the web browser so rather than playing it in place within the web browser it is actually doing it through the YouTube application on the device which is fine um, not actually working in place but uh, yeah that, I, that's not really a big deal um, if we can go back at home and go back into the menu uh, obviously we have Gmail and we have our contacts as I've already mentioned and uh, let me just set up so that we can go into the market and I'll just set up my Google account and sign in as you see I've already signed in so that takes me back out and I have to go back into the market I'll accept the conditions and let Android market load and it's exactly the same as any other Android handset in fact but it uh, it works very well you can scroll through quite like the Android market to be honest with you you can search by apps and games and you can go into apps and you could do a search but also the apps are broken down into categories um, as are in fact the games are broken into categories which is something I actually think is missing from the Apple App Store because there aren't any categories on the Apple App Store obviously there are on Android but if I go back uh, obviously you can see it's uh, coming up with uh, some suggestions for uh, most popular or featured downloads um, Seismic Twitter client there is, uh, is quite good I've already used that uh, there's Google Maps but that's pre-installed but there's a few on there but obviously we can do a search there are um, over 20 something thousand um, I believe apps that are and uh, games that are available for Android so that's pretty good um, also in setting up my um, Android market account I can go into Google Mail now and I haven't had to separately separately set up my Google Mail account it is part of my obviously Google and, and the market account that I have so I don't have to set up a an Android market account and then go and set up my Gmail account that's all done at the same time so that's quite good and obviously then you have your welcome message 
so that gives you that shows you your standard mail layout well, there's no real complaints to be made about the mail layout i think that's quite good uh, we can come back out of here and out of gmail and we can actually go to the standard email and we can set up a new mail account so let me just set it put in some rubbish so that we can actually just skip past this part here and we can actually have pop3 imap and exchange active sync support for our email which is quite good um, i know that's been added into android for a while um, but it was actually missing from exchange active sync support was uh, natively missing from the Acer Liquid. We actually had to use Road Sync if we wanted to use um, Exchange Active Sync support. Um, but obviously that's been included here on the Nexus One. Okay, so that's already a really is sort of a brief tour of the handset. We're going to have a bit more detail when it comes to the full review, and I'll look at the OS in a bit more detail once I've had a chance to play around with it, really, because this literally has just arrived. Haven't had a chance to look at it at all yet. Um, so far, it looks pretty impressive. Um, I think it's a handset I could probably be quite happy with. I will also be testing out the T-Mobile SIM also to uh, so first hand see what that uh, that is like. Obviously there have been a lot of complaints about uh, T-Mobile coverage and also uh, the lack of 3G that uh, seems to be the case with the handset on T-Mobile. Just a quick comparison to a couple of other handsets which uh, is going to be pretty much inevitable. So next to the iPhone as you can see they are fairly similar in size where obviously the Nexus one has a larger screen but very similar in size um, in terms of width, height and thickness and um, it's kind of easy to see in that respect perhaps where Google really wants to aim this um, Nexus one they're not calling it a smartphone they're calling it a super phone and um, they you know think it's gonna win over and uh, be the iPhone beta. Um, I'm not sure that will be the case, but um, it's interesting. Uh, this is the HD2, obviously a dummy model HD2, but again to give you an idea of size of the flagship, uh, what I would call a flagship Windows mobile device. So obviously the HD2 has a much larger display and is a much larger device, as can, as can be seen there. Uh, similar thickness. But uh, the HD2 is a bit quite a bit heavier, and uh, also the HTC Hero. You can see the Hero's got a quite a bit smaller display, and is a bit of a smaller device, and uh, different footprint there. Obviously, the Hero being that much thicker. So there's a couple of sort of popular devices to compare it to to give you an idea in terms of the size. So I'm impressed so far. It feels quite nice in my hand. The actual um, case design just. Yeah, it feels quite good. Um, it is possible that if you order one, you can actually get it engraved with uh, whatever you want. Two rows of text can be engraved on the back here, which I've seen a few that have been done. And it does look really quite good. Um, but yes, the design seems really good. Um, construction and you know build quality so far seems quite good. But we come to expect a fairly decent um, build and de uh, design and build from HTC. Um, the quality of HTC products I personally think is pretty good in general in terms of actual build quality. So this seems to be um, certainly on par with, with other devices that I've seen made by HTC. So that seems quite good. But yes, it's a design I think is quite appealing and quite attractive. Um, probably a good mass market uh, product. Hopefully it gets that sort of exposure. I think I've covered all the specification. So for now, let me just sign off by saying uh, don't forget to actually come and see our full review on tracyandmat.co.uk which will be on site over the next week or so. Um, I'll obviously be trying to get that out as quickly as possible because uh, I know it's a very popular device at the moment so we'll try and get the review for you as quickly as possible. And I'll probably come back with a, another video at some point which I'll go into a bit more detail uh, perhaps with some of the applications and the Android market and a few other bits and pieces so you can see the OS in a bit more detail. So head over to tracyandmatt.co.uk and don't forget to follow us on Twitter. On Twitter we are Tracy and Matt so you can get updates. And when a review goes live that will also be tweeted as well. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon on tracyandmatt.co.uk.